philosophy is based on three values, and those are family-driven, youth-guided, culturally and linguistically competent, and community-based. Essentially what it does is it puts the family, the parent and the caregiver, back in the driver's seat instead of the professionals coming in and saying, well, this is what you need, and this is how we're going to fix you and your family. This is an opportunity for families to say, no, this is what works for me and my family. As a parent of a child with a mental health diagnosis, I know how difficult it is to get the systems to work together and to do what you need them to do to support you and help you. And um, this is really an opportunity to give those families those kind of resources so that they know uh, you're not alone. Family support is a little bit different in that the family members can go in and talk to other family members. So what we do is we have a certification process. And if we have a parent or caregiver throughout the state who is interested in working with other families and has lived experience. The lived experience is the key. And so they can go in and have a conversation with the family and be like, I know what you're going through. This is what my child was going through. And watching the walls break down as soon as you've got somebody else who can actually relate to what you're going through, it's totally different. We can send in clinicians all day long to have all these different conversations and get assessment data and do all of the paperwork that's required. But when a family support specialist steps in the door, it's kind of a totally different ball game because they're really there to provide the advocacy and the empowerment to that parent or caregiver to say, you're not a bad parent. Stuff happens. How do we make this better? So not only are we supporting the child or the youth, we're supporting the family because what we know is we can make changes all day long and we can give all the best treatment in the world, all the evidence-based practices, and that child and youth may feel great and they're doing well, but you put them back in the same environment in their home and it's gonna fall apart. So the idea is that we're helping to educate and empower the entire family to change their family culture. Basically, this grant is kind of the culmination of 17 years of work and taking all of those lessons learned and looking back through all of the different people who have contributed so much to Tennessee and now this is an opportunity to take that to the next level. What we're looking to do in this next year is to get these new seven sites up and running, get them serving families and uh, continuing to expand on what we're doing at the county level, which is continuing to figure out what is the best way that we can partner with county levels uh, folks to move forward what we're doing. Hopefully by the time it's all done, the idea is that all 95 counties in Tennessee will have access to this service and they can have somebody come in and just help them figure it out. Well, we have a pretty expansive criteria to be eligible. We see anyone 0 to 21. They have to have a mental health diagnosis. It can be a co-occurring diagnosis, which would mean they have a mental health issue and a substance abuse issue, or they have a mental health issue and a developmental disability. We will see any of those children and youth. In addition, they need to have tried services and not been successful. We're really looking for that top tier of children and youth who, you know, we've tried lots of different stuff. They're involved in multiple systems, whether it be problems at school or uh, juvenile justice or child welfare or they're medically fragile. And so this is really that top 5% of children and youth who are uh, seen in the Medicaid system who are really, really severe and we just have had no success before. 